It's a TV dinner classic that fed millions across America, but what do you really know about the retro entree known as Salisbury steak? In the Civil War era, intestinal ailments were common in soldiers who subsisted on a diet low in nutrients. Believe it or not, digestive illnesses such as dysentery killed more soldiers during the Civil War than battlefield combat. As an early follower of germ theory, New York-born Dr. James H. Salisbury was adamant in his belief that food could serve a medicinal purpose. Salisbury's work sat at the cutting edge of this kind of research, so he performed most of his early diet trials on himself and a few other willing test subjects. One such trial consisted of Dr. Salisbury eating nothing but baked beans for a few days, which wreaked havoc on his digestive system and overall well-being. In another trial, test subjects consumed only porridge for about 30 days. Salisbury finally found his eureka moment when he tested a singular diet of lean, minced beef, which he determined to be the perfect alimentation – his word for food – for easy human digestion. Salisbury began to distribute portions of what he called muscle pulp of beef to Union Army soldiers, hoping to both provide them with sustenance and prevent potentially lethal intestinal diseases. He continued to research the topic for a good 30 years. Salisbury finally published his findings in the 1888 book The Relation of Alimentation and Disease. Dr. Salisbury's book turned out to be a hit. The public was impressed by his findings, and patties of muscle pulp of beef began to be seen as a cure for intestinal discomfort. The food was eventually renamed Salisbury Steak, in honor of its creator and it is now widely considered to be one of the first American fad diets. Tired of shoveling in nothing but forkfuls of Salisbury steak? Dr. Salisbury suggested that eaters could switch to boiled mutton for a similar effect. As civilians adopted Salisbury's low-carb diet, the steak patty's status as a nutritious military meal carried on unabated. The General Mess Manual and Cookbook, first published in 1904, included a recipe for hamburger steak. 1945's edition of the Cookbook of the United States Navy also gives Dr. Salisbury a direct shout-out, with the inclusion of a recipe for griddle-broiled Salisbury steaks. Salisbury, who died in 1905, recommended eating muscle pulp of beef three times a day, accompanied by hot water to amp up its digestive cleansing ability. While this may help alleviate acute stomach afflictions, like many fad diets, it really isn't particularly sustainable in the long term. Around the same time Dr. Salisbury began promoting the healing properties of chopped beef, a pounded meat dish called the Hamburg steak was being cooked up in Europe. As its name suggests, Hamburg steak has origins in Hamburg, Germany, where it was known to be a popular dish in the mid-1800s. It was introduced to U.S. kitchens through sailors and immigrants who landed in Boston and New York City, and started showing up in cookbooks and on restaurant menus throughout the 1870s and 1880s. A traditional hamburger steak is hand-pounded rather than ground or minced like a Salisbury steak, and then mixed with fried, finely chopped onions. When the hamburger sandwich took the states by storm at the onset of the 20th century, the hamburger steak's signature pounded texture began to change and was often swapped for ground meat. Now most hamburger steak recipes call for ground beef patties mixed with breadcrumbs and onions before being pan-fried. Sometimes called the poor man's steak, the hamburger steak is essentially a cross between fried meatloaf and a bunless burger. In the mid-20th century, Swiss steak joined hamburger steak and Salisbury steak as typical family dinner fare in homes across America. The differences between hamburger steak and Salisbury steak are slight, yet still well-defined. But what about Swiss steak? Well, it stands out from the other two steaks for a few reasons. For one, it's newer. While hamburger steak and Salisbury steak gained popularity back in the 19th century, one of the earliest known records of Swiss steak's existence comes from a recipe printed in 1915. Another distinction is that it has a different texture, which also plays into how the decidedly un-Swiss Swiss steak got its name. Swiss steak is a top round, or rump cut of beef, that is tenderized by a method referred to as Swissing. Rather than being fed through a grinder like Salisbury steak, or pounded into submission Hamburg style, Swissing involves putting this rough cut of steak through a machine equipped with tiny blades. The incisions made from the blades break up the connective tissues responsible for the meat's less-than-ideal consistency. Meanwhile, hamburger and Salisbury steaks are fried or broiled and usually served with a healthy pour of beef-based onion or mushroom gravy. 
Swiss steak, however, is browned in oil and then braised or baked in a stew-like sauce of tomatoes and onions. In modern times, home-cooked Swiss steak is often prepared in a crockpot or Dutch oven. During World War I, Americans said Auf Wiedersehen to culinary words heavy with German influence. Frankfurters were renamed hot dogs, sauerkraut changed into Liberty Cabbage, hamburgers became Liberty Sandwiches, and the mighty hamburger steak merged with its more patriotic cousin, Salisbury Steak. At times like this, I am proud to be an American. Salisbury Steak's spike in popularity was prolonged by the Great Depression which hit the U.S. hard in 1929. This was a time when resources were scarce, forcing Americans to get creative with simpler ingredients. Salisbury steak fit in with other Great Depression foods because it used inexpensive cuts and processing methods of beef. To make matters even more stressful, the U.S. government began a nationwide food rationing system in the spring of 1942 due to the nation's growing involvement in World War II. It didn't take long for meat to be added to the ration list, compelling Americans to stretch what they had as far as it could possibly go. Salisbury steak continued to be a go-to meal, however, because it fed a whole family and took well to being cut with oats or cream of wheat. The Salisbury steak nourished American soldiers and civilians throughout some of the most challenging times in the nation's history. But in the post-war era, its role would change completely. Clarence Birdseye upended the frozen food game in the mid-1920s when he invented the Double Belt Freezer. But his namesake, Frozen Food Empire, is not credited with creating the first frozen dinner. That milestone belongs to Maxson Food Systems, a Long Island-based company that used the Double Belt Freezer to make complete frozen meals called Stratoplates in 1945. These compartmentalized trays of meat, potatoes, dessert, and a vegetable were first marketed as airplane food. As the 40s drew to a close, frozen dinner trays would turn up as bar food, courtesy of Jack Fisher's Friggy Dinners, and as a regional novelty around Pittsburgh thanks to Albert and Meyer Bernstein. However, it was mega-brand Swanson that made this idea iconic in 1954 when it sold frozen turkey as part of a compartmented tray meal, coining the term TV dinner in the process. Lucky me! My wife uses Swanson TV turkey dinners. And make your husband lucky, too. Turkey was the original meat source of a TV dinner, but with the convenience overcooking trend showing no sign of slowing, variety was key. In the early days, Swanson TV dinners were centered around turkey, fried chicken, meatloaf, and Salisbury steak. The name TV dinner was inspired in part by the booming number of televisions that appeared in more and more homes during the 1950s and people's tendency to gather around it, even at dinner time. This was also a decade when American women were joining the workforce by the millions, which meant fewer housewives were available to prepare dinner for their husbands and kids. Just as the Salisbury steak had a place in the 19th century diet and the Great Depression era, it found a comfortable place in the rapidly expanding TV dinner industry. Too comfortable, perhaps. Banquet, a company known for its frozen meat pies, quickly modified its business strategy to include an array of TV dinners that included Salisbury steak. I just put it in the oven, and by and by it was done, and I had a delicious buffet supper. Oh, yes, I did! Whether you were a kid whose parents worked late, a 20-something single person, or simply too tired to cook after a long day, these frozen meals were a quick dinner solution. Newer brands such as Stouffer's and Marie Callender's quickly hopped on the TV dinner scene, many of them selling their own versions of Salisbury steak. Today, Salisbury steak remains a popular choice for frozen TV dinners. Sadly, due to being closely associated with the freezer aisle, it is rarely utilized as a homemade dinner. Dr. Salisbury would roll over in his grave if he knew that Salisbury steak is now considered to be unhealthy. Flip over the box of a frozen dinner Salisbury steak and you'll find a lot of sodium, a lot of cholesterol, and, depending on the brand, ingredients ranging from the concerning to the outright confusing. Surely this is not what Dr. Salisbury had in mind back in the 1800s, when Salisbury steak was the health food of the moment. Unfortunately, processed foods rife with sodium and preservatives have long been what TV dinners are all about. If you had any doubt, consider the fact that the Environmental Working Group rates Swanson's Hungry Man Salisbury Steak Frozen Dinner a 10 on its concern level scale, the worst score possible. Hungry Man, it's dinner with the Swansons, only much more of it.
That's due to its hardcore sodium level, the high chance of growth hormones in the meat, and the dish's heavily processed nature. Even if you give frozen dinners the cold shoulder and opt to cook a Salisbury steak on your own, the ground meat and gravy are still high in salt and saturated fat. The modernized version of Salisbury steak is more comfort food than fad diet fodder, so it's better considered a special treat rather than a daily meal. Sorry, Doc. We know all about Salisbury Steak's swaggering prowess in the frozen food domain, but does that mean this is all it can ever be? Certain restaurants beg to differ. One example is Grand Lux Cafe, a sit-down chain with locations across Las Vegas, Chicago, New York, Dallas, and Houston. Grand Lux Cafe sees value in the classics and keeps Salisbury Steak on its menu, along with other home-style gems such as braised pot roast. Then there's the more unexpected route. Hip New York eatery C as in Charlie makes Salisbury steak cool again with a praiseworthy fusion called the Salisbury steak. This dish is a playful marriage of Korean and Southern flavors that honors the owner's Asian heritage and Atlanta roots. Unlike your ordinary Salisbury steak, the Salisbury steak isn't plated with the run-of-the-mill green veggies and mashed potatoes, however. Instead, it sits on a bed of savory Gruyere grits and features a Korea-inspired galbiju in place of gravy. With such a storied legacy, it's not surprising that many label Salisbury steak as a vintage comfort food. Salisbury steak as a TV dinner is almost certainly here to stay, and that's not a bad thing. But in the 21st century, it wouldn't hurt to broaden our expectations of this historical meal. The internet agrees too. Chef John's YouTube channel, Food Wishes, offers a Salisbury steak recipe, encouraging its 4.4 million subscribers to cook the hamburger specialty at home. Recipes for vegan Salisbury steak are also plentiful online, especially in the wake of renewed interest in vegetarian and vegan ground beef substitutes. Fans of ready-made meals can enjoy much fancier types of Salisbury steak, too. Cook Unity is a pre-made meal service that offers chilled, not frozen, dishes, and they've got a Salisbury steak dinner of their own. The Salisbury steak entree is from New York City-born chef Anthony Nichols, who elevated the frozen Salisbury steak by using high-quality ingredients, adding caramelized onions, more sauce, and coupling it with more refined sides. Time and time again, we've seen kitschy throwback items saunter back into the spotlight, boosted by a renewed interest from the younger generation. Maybe Salisbury steak deserves another turn as a food of the moment, more than 100 years after the death of its legendary creator.